We are beginning. We're so happy you're here. Welcome to the Old Schwamm Mill. I'm Suzanne McLeod, one of the artists. I'll int a louder in back or maybe. OK, thank yeah. you. How's that? All right. Welcome to the Old Schwamm Mill. I'm Suzanne McLeod, one of the four artists who will be talking to you today about our work that's upstairs in the gallery. So if you haven't seen it, you'll have a chance afterwards. Um, we're very glad you're here to see our exhibit, Look, Perspectives on Nature. And I also want to welcome those of you who are here via Zoom, which is so exciting. It's standing room only here, and I hope you at home are sitting down and comfortable. Um, the four of us, Patty Crotty to my right, and Alyssa Yanover next, and Marie, Maureen McCabe, are very grateful to the Old Schwamm Mill for hosting and publicizing this event. And we hope that the Old Schwamm Mill benefits as much from our being here as we've benefited from being here. Um, we've really enjoyed this opportunity. Specific thanks. Yay, Mill. <laughs> Specific thanks to Lynette Asnavorian, Janet O'Riordan, Dermot Whitaker, and Reed Snyder, the last two for their technical assistance in making this and this and this possible. Um, do any of you want to say anything now before we get going? Well, thank you. And board members of the Old Schwamm Mill, thank you very much for your continued work in making this treasure of Arlington and frankly of the United States nice possible. For people to say their name again loudly. We will say our names as we go through. You'll hear we will be emblazoned on your memories. So the format we're going to be using is called uh, pachakacha. It's a Japanese word that means chit chat. And it was a a format for presenting slides developed in 2003 to um, help avoid death by PowerPoint. <laughs> we, we don't want you to be bored. We don't want you to fall asleep. And we're certainly not going to fall asleep. Each of us has 20 slides to show and each slide will be on the screen for 20 seconds. So that means that each of us will be speaking for six minutes and 40 seconds <laughs> and no more. <laughs> it's a little bit like being at the top of a Olympic ski run and having them say go and there's no stopping. Um, and after we each speak, we'll be open for any questions, discussion, but we also welcome you to enjoy the food provided by Food Link here in Arlington and upstairs, there's some wine and art, not in that order. <laughs> um, so we will begin with Patty Crotty to my right. I've known Patty since we met at an uh, Arlington Center for the Arts meeting 23 years ago. And we have been painting together, um, really supporting each other's art and parenting and friendship lives ever since. So when I got the call from the old Schwa Mill asking if I wanted to have a show here, one of my first thoughts was Patty. <laughs> so Patty may say more about her work, but now she'll share it. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you, Suzanne. Uh, I guess I'll move this. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, well, I feel like art expresses what cannot be put into words. So, um, but I'm going to give it a try for <laughs> six minutes or so. Uh, and so, and 40 seconds. So here goes. Okay. My, oops, okay. That's just my name. Uh, my work is in the vein of abstract expressionism. And in that it's very gestural, there's a lot of action in the brush strokes and the pencil marks, and it translates the energy of um, in the case of landscape, the energy that I feel in being in nature onto uh, the canvas and um, with many layers. And I try to, I often uh, will go outside. This was a view of a tree out my studio window. I like to capture the movement of the wind and the clouds and um, the energy. 
in these gestural marks. Um, we called the show Look Perspectives on Nature, and perspective is always kind of inherent in a uh, landscape because there has to be a point of view. And when you're out in nature, if you turn your head even a little bit, the whole, everything shifts. So um, it's a very important aspect of landscape. And when I think about landscape, I think about the land, but I also think about the world that we're living in. And um, so I don't set out to make work about climate change, but because it's on my mind, it kind of comes through in my work. Uh, this is at the reservoir. So I like to sketch on site. This is at the Arlington Reservoir. I like to go and do sketches and, and small paintings. And then I bring them back to the studio where I add more layers, take things away, cover over. Um, basically, uh, this is a close up from that painting to show there's a lot of variation in the viscosity of the paint and the drawn line. And again, I'm just trying, it's a, an intuitive process. It's sort of a call and response as the canvas is, is growing. I'm thinking about different shapes and colors and how everything uh, fits together in layers. Um, this one I wanted to show the evolution and earlier paint version of the same painting and later, and you can see I painted a lot of gray on top and these shapes come through that are up, that are underneath. And I'm interested in that, the interaction between what's happening on the surface and what's happening underneath. Um, I like to, uh, and also, sorry, this one is, um, I did this on site in Gloucester, these two small seascapes. And again, I'm trying to capture the energy and the flow of the water and the wind. And the Hudson River School of Painting, they found God in nature uh, back in the 19th century. And so um, I'm not religious, but I do find spiritual uh, sustenance being in nature and, and working in art. And I often find that some kind of a structure kind of comes through or the light, there's some kind of a grid that appears that makes me have some faith in some kind of um, uh point or structure to that there's some benevolent force in the universe. This one's called In the Garden, and I find it very healing to be in nature. And this one is a small painting, but I wanted to recall the warmth and the color of flowers growing in the garden. And um, I also often um, paint a lot of water studies. And here's one. Um, which is a great subject for me because you can see what's on the surface, what's being reflected, and then what's underneath. And again, it's about the layers and the connections between the different layers that I find really interesting. And uh, there's going to be a close-up of that painting where you can see I've done some drawing from a plant that was in my studio. And so taking lines from life adds, adds life and... Um, form to the otherwise abstract um, work. So I've done many paintings on the subject of water and these are old, this is uh, an older one from 2013. It's a large painting. I like to work large because then I feel like the viewer can sort of be immersed in the landscape. And so this one's called the class of heaven. I like to read a lot and I, and uh, reading a about recent scientific discoveries and consciousness and how our perceptions, we know from science that we are not completely understanding what's happening, that there's so much more going on than we can perceive with our limited senses. And so I like to think abstract art is a way of exploring some of these concepts and recognizing some of the interactions that might not be evident that we're all somehow connected in ways we don't fully understand. This one's called Safe Harbor. I did some sketching from my friend's back deck near the ocean on the Cape. And again, you have the sky reflecting in the water and the shapes that appear that are more geometric. And yet I've tried to capture the movement of the waves and the, and the wind. Um, I also work in collage and these are smaller pieces. They're more kind of freely done and, and fun. And if I move one piece of paper, everything shifts. So it's very fun to work out problems I might be kind of trying to address in larger works in the collage. Um, again, it helps me to see the interdependence of the different elements. And also in collage, you can put and mixed media, you can put all different kinds of materials together. And it's really fun to see the interplay. And, and I keep working with them until they come together to form a whole. And that makes me think about biodiversity and how important it is on our planet, how we are so dependent on the health of the soil for our own health and how it's so easy to forget that because it's not very evident to us. And again, there's so much going on below the surface that we don't 
fully understand it, it's not evident to our senses. And that's where I think art can be a way of exploring and making more visible these interconnections. I've recently started working in digital um, collage. I studied uh, photography and video in graduate school along with painting. And I recently kind of come back to it and I'm playing with layering different images. This is of a lake in New Hampshire that we like to go camping at. And the um, uh, next one is this trees and shadows. So it's some images of a park in Boston. And there's a man sitting on a bench and I layered the, Im the different images. So he seems to blend in with the trees. And again, it's exploring these questions of us and nature and what are our connections and what should our relationships be. And this one is called Winter Trees. And again, it's these underlying lines and connections and layers and the, gra like the graphic look of this bark that looks sort of like a print almost. Um, so that's um, me. <laughs> 20 slides, 20 slides. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I have the pleasure to introduce Alyssa Yanover. Um, Do people want who to is seats for a second? Oh, okay, thank you. Are thank you. Empty chairs up here. Yeah. There's one stool and one chair up front if anybody in back wants to sit. Come up and sit. Okay. All right, well, I want to introduce Alyssa Yanover, who I only met recently as part of this show. Um, she's a wonderful artist. I love her landscapes, and um, she works in a lot of different media, prints and collage and drawing. And um, she's also been an environmental activist for many years, and she founded a community garden in Brookline. And so it's my great pleasure to introduce Alyssa Yanover. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Um, my presentation is a little different. My work upstairs is more representational than Patty's, so it's I'm more observational. But I thought that um, I was kind of interested in, in what influences people and their artwork. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different instructors I've had over the years and how they influence my work. So uh, there are 20 slides. So it, there are 10 pairs. And the first one in each pair is a slide of an instructor's work, not my work. And the second one is a slide of my work that was influenced by their work. So that should, hopefully it's interesting. <laughs> so this is, um, this is, I was very lucky to grow up in New York City and I went to the Art Students League and I studied with this amazing instructor, Yui Lee Smith, who was a, he was trained as a classical painter and he taught us how to paint figuratively. And we did, um, well, he, his paintings are they're actually at the MFA. I didn't know who he was. So he taught us how to paint using underpaintings um, in raw umber. And we really worked very slowly to get a likeness. And it was a very long, slow process of um, putting down paint and pulling paint back up and until we felt comfortable. And then once we had a likeness, we slowly added color. So that was what I learned from him. Then I, I was so lucky. I loved Wolf Kahn's work and he was teaching at the National Academy of Art in New York City. It's like, I had, had I didn't realize how lucky I was. His work is so loose and the colors are so beautiful. And, and um, I tried to paint loosely, but I really had trouble for years. I would take his book with me, a book of his work when I was painting and I'd put it in front of me and try to paint the way he painted, but I was always really tight. This is actually kind of loose. I did this, this is in the show upstairs and I did this in the studio, but I'm like channeling Wolf Kahn to try to get those beautiful colors and the looseness. So but most of my paintings are not that loose. And then, um, then I took a class. It was just was very interesting to me. This woman, Susan Lickman, who teaches at Brandeis, she does these amazing paintings where she puts figures in in a space, but these figures, I couldn't believe it. She takes them from magazines. They're not there. They're not like a model posing. And I just thought, how could she possibly do that? So I took this workshop where she had us take figures or dogs, <laughs> but in this case, from different places and just create an imagined, like, you know, space and just plop them in. And she said, don't worry, it will work. They will fit in and they'll make sense. And it was, it gave me a splitting head. I mean, I really almost left the class. It was so painful, but it was very interesting that I, I got to study this. I studied with so many people. So Israel Hirschberg, I never went to art school. So this is my art school. 
I went to Italy and I studied with Israel Hirschberg and he did these very soft paintings and he had this mirror where the back was worn off and he would have us look at the landscape in the mirror so it was broken up and he said we should paint like that so I tried to use very soft colors and soften my edges and this is uh one painting I did there but it's not it, it's not the way his real followers paint you know which was very softly with a lot of broken edges but I tried so and then let's see this one then I fell in love with Edna Boyce Hopkins who um was born in like, I have my notes, but it was like 1837 or something. And she lived in Ohio. She did these amazing woodcut prints. And I just was determined to learn how to do that. So it was um, many plates. She used a lot of a different plate for each color. So this is my attempt. And um, later she moved to Provincetown and she worked on this technique called a, a white line woodcut. I don't know if you've heard of that, where you only actually have one plate and you attach the paper and you ink certain areas and you and it's it you don't have to worry about registration about moving the plates so this is with multiple plates I tried to do with Edna Boyd Hopkins then I, I fell in love with printmaking a friend of mine said take a, a class at Mass Art uh, with Katerina Coelho who's now the the studio manager she's an amazing printmaker this is a mono print and she uses stencils and um, just a piece of plexiglass, she inks it, and then she puts a stencil down and she gets layers and layers of color. So wow. mine is not as free as hers, you can see, but, this, but you can't totally imitate your teacher. So these are, you know, these are stencils. And it's interesting to look at it from, you know, now, years later, try, and try to remember the order of the, the, ink, the colors. Um, sorry, it's... Um, I was just saying it's hard to remember the order of the colors. So here I studied with Nancy McCarthy, who does color. Her whole approach is color shapes. Like every space is a particular color and value and temperature. And the edges are very um, sharp. She doesn't blur her edges so when she paints. So I took a workshop with her that was actually indoors. And we really could do whatever we wanted. But she always had a... Um, a still life set up or a model and we could always practice doing color shapes so this is a color shape painting so you know I've learned so much from so many people I don't when I'm painting though I never think about, about all those things it's like I just do kind of whatever I just get absorbed in the process but um, Catherine Kehoe also teaches color shape painting and she was very in she really taught about mixing color and how you should never use anything like a black or a neutral out of the tube you should always mix it so you get a more a really richer color and um so she had us do this is an exercise and she had us do a self-portrait in 15 color shapes no more than that and um it's it was just a challenge and it's very interesting I don't know if I would take that into my other work, but, and I'm not even sure how it influences me, but I think it all does, it all adds up and starts to influence you. Um, Nancy Griskin was totally out of the box. She's she's such an interesting instructor. She kind of reminds me, there's a Cy Twombly show with the MFA and I was reading about it, I wanna see it. And he, he was really, um, he lived in Italy and he was very influenced by Roman and Greek art. So was Nancy Gruskin. You would never guess. Like Cy Twombly too has all these scribbles. So Nancy Gruskin had us look at, well, in this case, I looked at a Dutch painting and I actually, she had us make paper mache objects. And I made the, these were this these pictures were in a Dutch painting and the orange. And then from those paper mache objects, we did collages and paintings. So she works in many different types of media. And then this is what my foray with abstraction. Jordan Wilson um, is very philosophical and he wanted us to paint on a very large canvas and not get attached to the painting at all. So it was all about mark making. So we had to do marks. And um, then the next week we would come back and do different marks on top of the painting. We couldn't save our paintings. We had to keep painting over it. And at one point I just said, you know, I like these marks and it was on Zoom. So I was able to put that painting aside and just replace it with a different canvas and he had no idea. <laughs> so this was like week six instead out of an eight week class. And um, yeah, and that's it. Wow. This is, I would like to introduce Maureen, who I know from um, a studio. I was next door to her in, in, in 
a brain tree street in Austin, 119 Brain Street, Street Street, which is a great studio building, but it's unfortunately it's closing soon because it will be rebuilt as residential. Um, so yeah, so it's it's not gonna be open, but we were next door, so we knew each other and we visited each other and supported each other. So so that's how I know Maureen. And she invited me to join this show. So the microphone, please. When you're ready, you can play. Where is it? Oh, oops. let's cancel that. You want to press yeah. play? Okay. When you're ready. Okay. Hi, I'm just going to talk about my artist journey. And um, I actually went to school for video art in the. Er I went to school for video art in the early 90s. And um, Nam June Pike, who is a video artist who did video installations, really influenced me, as well as. Lori Anderson, who was also a performance artist and still is. She does a lot of virtual reality. Um, but they were both very intrinsic in the work I did. I then ended up starting to work in television. And when I worked in television on the side, I was making collages. Um, and these collages, you'd used commercial images these this was before they had photoshop so these were all manually cut and pasted and um there were a lot of commercial images so they were influenced by like andy warhol and pop art so a lot of them were the viewer watching the viewer and they were basically a lot of pop art images but while i was working in video i was thinking about a career change so you could see my frustration in my work with my collages in the next collage which is called mass media and um you'll see how frustrated i am with the television field <laughs> but i still continue to make a bunch of collages about my frustration and um i had fun making them and it was really enjoyable but then i decided i wanted to go into the healing arts field so i started my as i changed my artwork changed and um, my content of my collage has changed. And I was thinking about earth and more serene things and um, just about where I was going and, you know, what was going on with my life. And then um, I started evolving with my collages and decided I wanted to use ripped paper. And I did that with this one called Silence. I started to rip the paper up and take other magazine images, but I would rip them up and glue them all together. So I just kept like building on what I had already been doing. And um, I was then inspired by Jasper Johns, who I saw this incredible collage according to what, which he had ready made in it. He had a chair in it. And I just made me want to start building around the collages. So I started taking my collage and expanding further. And then in the next collage, I built a metal frame around it. And I used a lot of Xeroxes and found images and just kept building. And um, the metal frame was with bolts and many different things. And it was just really fun. And then I was like, I'm gonna go further. I'm gonna put media into my collages. So um, I made this one, which was from a door cabinet, and I put a sound a music box in it and then played memories. And I donated it to AIDS Action Committee for a big benefit to support AIDS action, AIDS patients. And um, so that was my journey with before I went into painting. Then I went back into painting my true love and I started painting again. And this is part of a series called Universal States. I have five of these. And um, it was about different states of mind. It could be different states of being. I mean, it can be interpreted any way you'd like, but they're all three by four feet. So then I decided to seek out my mentor who is Nancy Rayner. And she's an artist, author and teacher. And this is her painting in her studio. She works with gold leaf and silver leaf. And she's taught me to everything I know about acrylic painting. Um, so this is one of Nancy's paintings, Sea Mist and Birds. And she's done this one with silver leaf. It's acrylic on panel, 44 by 36. And, 
Okay, sorry about that. And um, so she's really taught me to push push me to the limit with all my acrylic painting. So I've really gotten involved with the texture in my work. And this piece I made was called Evolve. And I started using texture and uh, using iridescent paints and just really started playing with limits and pushing the mediums as far as I felt I could. And then I keep going from there. This is a canvas that has no paint on it, but has texture on it. And I just wanted to show my process. I lay down the texture, then I add the paint. Then I sometimes pull off some texture, add more paint, pull it off, add more paint. But I just wanted to show what a canvas looks like with just texture on it. And then this is a triptych I made called Biosphere, which is about climate and about what's, you know, life and it's a smaller scale piece and I just wanted to show a smaller scale piece because so much of my work is so much bigger and um, once again it uses iridescence and these next three pieces are from a series and I, they were made during a time of change where I was really wondering what was going to happen and it was kind of a mysterious time for me with the unknown so this is called mystify and um, turbulence. So they kind of all go together. And they, once again, they're very heavy textured pieces. They all work together. Um, and then the third piece of this series is um, convergence, which will pop up next. <laughs> so, and um, they're all acrylic on panel. And so they use iridescent paints as well. So that's basically my journey. And where I'm going next is the latest painting is my finished, latest finished painting. It's called Crossroads. It'll pop up in a second. And this is where I'm going now with a more subdued palette and more subdued texture. And that's my journey and how I've gotten to where I am today. Thanks for listening. So I want to introduce Suzanne Glee. Hello. <laughs> I met Suzanne many years ago at Turtle Studios. And um, ironically, we just met up recently through a Zoom call. And um, then we reconnected and she asked me to be in the show and I love her work and I felt honored that she would ask me to be in the show and I just love her work and I'm so glad to be a part of the show. So <laughs> glad you're here. Thanks, Maureen. Can you hear me in back? This is tipping over, I think. Okay, that seems good. All right. All right, my name is Suzanne McLeod. I'm I'm um, an artist here in Arlington. I haven't gone to art school, but I have like Alyssa studied with a bunch of different people and my slides are not organized chronologically. They're gonna be organized by theme, showing some of my influences and inspirations. Um, and also different reflections on nature. So just push anything. Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. First and most obvious meaning of nature is what's non-human, uh, what's what's not man-made or human-made, the natural world. And many of my landscape paintings, this one's upstairs, are about taking a look at the natural world. Uh, this is the Mystic River here in Arlington. So is this one. Um, I try to look like our show is titled, to look and see carefully and to understand my surroundings and neighborhood and to invite the viewer to look and to understand the nature around us. My first sensory experiences of nature and of the natural world were and still are on the Rhode Island shore where I grew up. Um, I, I can really, I can smell right now what low tide smells like, <laughs> the squish of mud, the heat of the sand, the sounds of storms and surf, of crab shells. Um, this is in the neighborhood. And as I walk around, I also notice not only the, the non-human 
elements, but the the man-made. And so that's the second theme here is, is human nature and our nature to connect, to construct, to communicate. And um, probably why I became a therapist is because I like the human nature part of things. Um, I'm gonna let you read this quote on your own, but like acorns, it's our human nature to become and express who we are and I'm interested in exploring our inner nature, our human nature, and also the conditions that allow it to express itself. Um, in 1986, I learned about the work of Lithuanian archaeologist Maria Gimbutas, and she researched images for all over, from all over Eastern Europe, like this bird woman. That, and this is a figure we saw in Turkey when we traveled there. And I have a copy of this book here if anyone wants to look at it afterwards. So I started seeking out prehistoric art wherever I travel, like this petroglyph from Oregon. Um, her theory was that the female figure and feminine processes and feminine ways of knowing form the center of prehistoric matrilineal societies. And there was something about that and the imagery that just turned me right on. So when I arrived at Turtle Studios here in Watertown in 1992, the first thing I made was this owl I call it Owl Mother. There's a figure carved inside that's supposed to be me, and it's from a dream, but kind of bird, person, you know, human, animal, one in the same. And this is a self-portrait of an experience of caregiving, which I think is a key aspect of feminine nature and um, even a feminine landscape in which men and children find harbor. This is another self-portrait from the same time of caregiving. It's the landscape of my neighborhood and also an attempt to convey more of the nature of my experience and mood while caregiving. It's nice to have a moment to breathe. 20 seconds is really long. <laughs> um, lots of artists are inspirational to me. This is Donald Sa Saf, who lives in, in Vermont. We encountered his work. And what I loved was that it's very playful, bringing together human and animal elements, mixed media. So bringing together a lot of artistic elements and very playful. And I felt like it gave me a green light to paint things like this, which I painted for a friend who's here today. Um, and who in her nature is very connected and intertwined with trees and the earth. And I wanted to show no separation, that we are one being, um, the oneness of human and nature. I love how Chagall breaks the rules of gravity and anatomy and color and scale to create a personal landscape expressing his unique nature. I find his work really sensuous and totally liberating. It's like, oh, okay, turn the head upside down. <laughs> Put a donkey in. <laughs> and back to Rhode Island and crabs. Uh, I dream about cra crabs, oh, a couple times a week. And I find these dreams are very comforting. And I feel like I've touched a very deep part of myself, of my essential nature when I dream of crabs. So that's one crab dream. This is another crab dream more recently. Um, again, very comforted to imagine or to see in the dream, this woman swimming in a sea of crabs, which I guess when people look at it, they don't find that comforting. But... Um, in this one, I was trying to tap into my inner Chagall uh, after a trip to Provence this past fall and just trying to get at the grit of what I loved about that landscape, the stone stairways, animals, dogs, crosses, stones, shells embedded in stones, just all these natural elements uh, woven together. This is a landscape of Arlington with the spy pond mastodon at the bottom and Boston in the in the, at the top. But I went over and over this trying to, you know, the nature of our land here and of our town. And then the next is really about when we divide ourselves from nature, when nature becomes a commodity, like the crabs at the bottom becoming oil for the oil rigs above. And I think when we divide ourselves, we other, we other nature when we other things, it's the basis for war, misogyny, racism, and ecocide. So the flip side of the othering is the 
connecting. And this is a love painting of Mount Gilboa, where I live in Arlington, right, right over there. And uh, the house at the top of the hill. And um, just, again, trying to make up my neighborhood and, and love it. And the last painting is also a love painting of a, a dear friend, a portrait who loves nature in all its forms. And I also wanted to show her essential nature of kindness and light and connection with the world. And that's that. Well, folks, I'd say um, as you take questions, you might want to repeat the question so the Zoom audience can hear it and get it recorded. We will take questions and we'll repeat the questions that people ask so people at home can hear them. Oh, right. So let us know if you have a question and if it's for a specific one of us, say who it's for. You'll remember our names now, right? <laughs> you know who we are? <laughs> Any questions? Wow, I guess we covered it all. <laughs> are there questions that any of you have for each other or questions that you had considered while putting these this work and these talks together. Yeah, I have a I'm wondering how much knowing that you were going to have to present your work in this format with the slideshow and very rigid in the time. How much that influenced how you think about your exhibit and your work? How much did the format, the pachakacha, the twenty second twenty slides yeah. format, affect how we think about our work? Um, I'll answer for me briefly, which is that. Patty just suggested this format in one of our meetings a couple of weeks ago. So it was a it was a latecomer to the game and um, but welcome because none of us wanted to drone on forever. <laughs> but I did find that it shaped my thinking and I ended up with elements far from the work that's upstairs, but that I realized are really connected, both in my own work and other people's work. And I think trying to find a cohesive through line that wouldn't make 20 slides so broken up forced a story that was, I hope, a little more coherent than it might've been otherwise. Um, so I loved this format. Thanks, Patty, for yeah. finding it. <laughs> um, good, good question, Katja. Yeah, I think that I found I had to really cut down when I started, I Close. had a lot of things I wanted to say and I felt I really had to like, cut a lot out and just spoke and I said just to focus on the mostly the work here but it did help me think about more like kind of why I do what I do which I hadn't you know really you know it's there it's inherent but I hadn't it, it's it's a good exercise to have to put it into words even though it is challenging to do so <laughs> yeah I get I guess I feel the same way yeah I it really fast I just had to I guess I really didn't look back and think about my the influences in my work, and I thought it would be an interesting angle to do that. So it was helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good question. Sorry. It really made me think about how I got to where I am today and like my artistic journey, as I said before. And it really helped me to look back and see where I really began. So it really brought some insight to that. Yeah. Can we talk about some of the artists who inspired us? In addition to some that were on the screen? Yeah. You know, that's one of those questions that makes me say, you know, that, that guy who does those things that are like, you know, <laughs> which is why it was really good to have this format to make me think, ah, oh, it's Marc Chagall. Yeah, um, those kind of magical realism. Uh, I, you know, I went to New York recently and, and had time at the Guggenheim and the Metropolitan Museum and the Whitney, it just, kind of wandering and, and following my eyes. And I realized that almost any painting I found myself in front of, I could fall in love with, that I could start seeing just how amazing it was. And 
I was kind of surprised because oftentimes I go into a museum with a set of this is what I like and let me get through those other rooms. And this time, uh, you know, so I kind of felt like almost like watching Alyssa's slides, like everybody has something to teach. So as far as who's actually influenced, I feel more open to anybody, though there's there's something about that Chagall, the realism, the playfulness, and also the depth of of um, human human experience in in the world. Um, well, I the um, abstract expressionists of the '40s and '50s in New York, the New York School, were a really strong influence on me when I when I was studying art, and um, kind of stuck with me for a long time. But um, there's so many others. Well, there's all the everyone who came, a lot of the important artists that came before, like Monet and Impressionism and all that stuff, I also did. But more recently, I was I saw a show by Catherine Bradford up in Portland, and uh, it kind of blew my mind because I she's so just does her own thing. And I kind of think, are you allowed to do that? You know? <laughs> so that that and Gail Winbury, I've been looking at some new newer artists that I didn't know about, and I'm really excited about seeing where that kind of influence and freedom might, might take me. So... Just remember your camera. You want to turn oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'd say my primary influence is um, the abstract expressionist, and Joan Mitchell has really influenced me. Um, just her looseness and her bold brushstrokes. Um, she's really been a primary influence for me. Okay. <laughs> Are there are there uh, artists who you see in our work? <laughs> so I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> I heard the beginning. It's hard to hear. I'm sorry. Oh, here, here, why don't you repeat I think it? She, I think you said that you think it's brave to be an artist and even braver to talk about it. And how do we push through our insecurities when we're making our art or when we're talking about our art? So I guess I can answer first that. Uh, you know, it helps that to have a welcome, a friendly crowd. <laughs> I figure you guys are still selected and you came because you like the mail or you like art or you you wanted to. And and often I find for myself, I'm often hardest on myself uh, when it comes to these things. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And um, it is challenging, but it's it's also kind of fun. I always wish, I always say to my husband, I wish afterwards, which I just relaxed and enjoyed it because <laughs> I do get nervous about these things. But um, anyway, that's that's my opinion. Anybody else? Maureen? Okay, <laughs> Melissa, did you? Yeah. No. You have one question from online. Uh, someone asked any of you or all of you, what's next? <laughs> wine upstairs <laughs> um but i was but about the other question i i i love talking <laughs> yeah she's really good at it <laughs> the art's kind of a side thing <laughs> but i think i i really love the how words and art making work together you know just to explore the word nature the the way i started this talk was to look up the word nature and i actually don't think i brought that piece of paper but there are so many definitions and it helped me think about oh we're not just talking about trees we're talking about human nature inner nature essential nature the nature of you know that's a rich word and um and i probably the etymology is rich too and i find that the words you know that contemplation can prompt art making for me that can prompt painting that can prompt collage so I find that the words and the the images go back and forth and um and I probably miss my days of leading groups and th <laughs> this is really satisfying <laughs> uh what's next uh not really the wine that's totally no um, I'm painting, I'm painting 
every day I retired from clinical work. So it's going into the studio and painting. And um, uh, I don't know, I guess there's, uh, you know, it just feels like, I guess for myself, there's some quote about how nothing, there's no substitute for walking the walk. And I could easily talk the talk, <laughs> but when it comes to making work, I think there's no substitute for not talking, going in the studio, messing around, making mistakes, figuring out what's working, what's not working, and and kind of seeing, kind of following what's next, not necessarily leading what's next. I, so I don't know. I hope a whole lot more paintings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can say basically the same with what she said, <laughs> but basically, yeah, just keep working and see where it leads. And I've been working with more figures lately, putting them into the landscape. And so that's kind of fun to play with in more digital media, video and, and uh, photography and collage. Um, I joined a printmaking studio, so I've been I'm just experimenting with printmaking and trying to get some nice wood grain to come on the bed, you know, just technical things. And we'll see where where that goes. But I want to do some abstract prints as well. I'm currently working on four paintings simultaneously and having fun, like, you know, working in between pieces and rotating them. And we'll see what happens after I finish this series. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, yes. Not a question, but a comment on observation. But um, one of you, I think the person who but talked about the spirituality and not having particularly being a religious person, but a spiritual person. And I was just thinking about how in your painting, uh, you you put aside Jacob, the Chagall that you chose was Jacob's Ladder. Mm -hmm. And in Jacob's Ladder, I, I remember learning, I, you never think of it, you think of angels coming down from heaven. But I think the idea is that the angels in his painting are going up and down. They're not going in one direction, really. And so there's the sense that um, you're bringing the spirit of the heaven, you know, down, it's coming down to you. And also your spirit is going up and being shared. So I thought it was interesting that you use that Chagall as an example. I re I'm really glad to learn more about the Chagall that I chose at Jacob's Ladder. There is a ladder, there are angels, and one of the people in the audience here at the mill knows that the angels in that painting are not only ascending, but they're descending. It's it's up and down, and something about, you know, that, that we may not be religious, but there's a spiritual aspect of, of immersing ourselves in nature, of looking at the world, of thinking about what matters to us um what we want to say and and i guess that painting he may have been communing in that way too in his own way i know i just found the image of the ladder but well, everything a ladder symbolizes of climbing leaving descending yeah. entering Thank you. That's really helpful. Does anybody else know more than we do about what we were talking about? <laughs> Many of you, I'm sure. <laughs> that that may be. I'd like to ask oh. you um, whether you have other exhibits like this, or whether it's difficult to find a place to, to show your paintings, or whether indeed people are quite eager to see them. What, because it seems to be such a you know, live um, thing that's going on. I feel like I'm new, new kid on the block, so I can't really, but but I, there's nowhere like the old Schwann Mill. <laughs> that's what you're asking. <laughs> but I mean, I think we have to look and ask and knock on doors. And as far as the quote unquote, real art gallery world. I, I think Patty has been part of galleries and knows more than I do about being a part of a gallery and the Boston gallery scene. Um, I'm more local here in Arlington. Very nice to have you formatted it. 
I just wondered if that was something new or whether you they were they're after you every day. <laughs> yeah, we have to leave pretty soon. <laughs> we have another gig. <laughs> uh, this, I don't know. I've never done exactly this before, but at the Arlington Center for the Arts, Patty and I last spring maybe went to a, a panel discussion. And I think it inspired our interest in setting this date on the calendar when we were setting up the show, thinking, you know, that enriched the visual experience so much. Oh, well, that's so much, so much. Well, we'll keep doing it because it's fun. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming.